Oh, we got a fishy. Yeah, a little male. Fishing a singles tournament today on a pretty popular body of water. 34 boats today. I'm on uh, what's called Duke's Bridge, Lake Waldron Lake. Let me tell you, the spring has been terrible fishing. It is April 30th. We still got water in 51.2 degrees of water. And that is not going to be a keeper. But I'm in a channel. I figured the fishing's been so bad around here lately that I might as well start in channel. Fish got to be gotta be full of eggs. They got to be ready to do their thing. Caught this one throwing a wacky rig, uh, wacky worm by Butcher's Baits, which is very similar to a Yamamoto Senko. fish all the way into the back of the channel. Never got bit. Come here in the back of it. Now I got two, two fish. Well, fish are in the back of the channel in higher numbers at least. The wrong size, but still same deal as my butcher's baits wacky worm. Let's see if we can't get a big one eventually. It's got to be a big male or better yet a big fat female. horrible brutal bite i mean absolutely horrible i am five hours in this tournament over five hours and i think i got my first keeper and i've caught four little guys it has been an absolutely horrible bite i can't hardly explain it being this bad i mean i guess i can april has been unusually cold but i've come into this little channel and i've had three bites almost right away one was a little tiny guy again the other one uh gave him a button now i think i got a keeper well sitting that was with uh uh, butcher's baits, uh, finesse worm, uh, uh, magna finesse worm, I think to call it. Uh, I'll put the name of it exactly below in the description. Beautiful weather out right here. Short, but he's a nice fat, nice fat male. Way too short, though. <laughs> well, doggone it. He's just that big. Nice, fun, little whippersnapper. I'm in this backwater here and a channel and finally found some fish. I, I don't know what the winner's going to do in this tournament. Hopefully I can get some, a word in with him. Not going to be me unless something miraculous happens here real soon. But I have tried. I've tried everywhere on the main lake. I've tried deep, shallow pads. The, the mouths of channels, numerous channels. I have not been bit anywhere except inside a channel. I saw some big ones in a channel. I saw them, didn't catch them. Didn't even get them to look at my bed. They swam away from me, that's what they did. Have to stand right in front of the camera. Yeah. Come on, Jimmy. <laughs> I told you I'd catch it with the winner. But let me start off. Mr. Mike Raver won with 19 pounds. My, my two behemoths that I weighed out, caught out there, weight Mike. Yeah. 2.65 pounds. Good work. Yeah. Got him out of the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. His smallest yeah. fish didn't weigh that much. <laughs> it weighed a little bit more. But let me tell you about a classy move before I put this guy on the spot. Because I told you, he's going to spill the beans now. First spot I went to this morning, very first spot, I'm going into a channel. I'm like, 
maybe I'm ready to rock this joint. Mike comes in behind me. I beat him to the spot. And as I'm almost stuck the boat, casting, he hollers out to me, are you going in or are you staying out? I said, I'm going in. This man turned straight around, went somewhere else. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I was going to say, compliment him on good sportsmanship. I mean, incredible sportsmanship. <laughs> But I wish you would have just come yeah, in there. Yeah, man. Because, I mean, dude, in hindsight, you should have just said, you know what? You can just have it and I, just turn around and went somewhere else. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yep. Because what ended up happening? Yeah. Well, hey, I mean, honestly, the first place I went to after that, when you've got this many boats on this lake, it's kind of like the first thing you believe in. If there's nobody there, you just say, oh, let's go see if I can catch one there. So I pulled into another channel, did not catch one, didn't even get a bite, actually. And then when I was leaving there, this is like 45 minutes into the day, I'm leaving there and I was running and I looked at a spot that I've caught a lot of good fish over the years and I haven't been catching them there this year, but all of a sudden, I mean, I looked and there was nobody there and I swung in there and the rest happened pretty darn quick. That was intuition to mm -hmm. go there. Yeah. Just intuition. And yep. you, you were here this week. Yes. Practicing yep. and you didn't touch that spot. No, I, I absolutely didn't. Nothing even in the neighborhood of that area. I was moving from point A to point B. Some people might call that just... I don't think I'm going to look. I don't think I will at all. That's, that's intuition. That's following your gut when someone's really got to feel what's happening on the water. Him, not me. That's, that's the kind of good stuff that happens. So you, can you, okay. So you got to this spot and you nailed him. I mean, hard. Yep. You got to give the juice, man. What happened? I mean, you tell me what you told me out there. Okay. Unbelievable. Yeah. So basically, I mean, I pulled into an area. The wind was blowing into it. Um, there is not much good grass on this lake right now, unfortunately, and that's a carryover from last year, which is a really bad situation. But um, there is a bright green patch of milfoil at the mouth of a channel, basically. And channel. it was like one of the only places that all day long I could throw, you know, a rattle trap or anything like that and not just be completely covered in black scum. Um, yeah, so I mean, I pulled in there in the very first cast I threw in there, I put my power poles down, throw in there, and one misses my chatterbait like three times, or you know, a school misses my chatterbait like three times, and then like 15 feet from the boat, a four pounder eats it. So that was like right away I knew there was a school there, so I wasted no time. I mean, I boat flipped the fish, put it in the live well, stood up on the deck, cast it again, okay, caught another one. Yeah, I boat flipped okay, every one of them. I didn't have time to go for the net, but. Yep, I mean, it, it really was, and I think that honestly was the key. There were a couple times like my trailer would get ripped off my chatterbait, and I would think in my head, man, I need to get that chatterbait back, but I wouldn't. I would literally just throw it down and pick up another rod, whether it was a swim jig or a rattle trap or anything, and just keep casting because for that 15 minute period, it was every single cast. She caught fish on how many consecutive casts? Probably a dozen, honestly, or roughly. Yeah, and it was it was like right when I got there too, which is the odd thing. Normally, it takes you a little bit to find them, but. What killed the school? What's, what killed the bite, Mike? What, what killed the what bite? What killed the bite was me missing my chance at big bass. I finally, what was weird, and it happens like this a lot in those schools, you either catch the big one first or last. And what happened was I caught a couple four pounders and a couple three pounders, and then I kept catching them, but they were smaller. They kept getting smaller and smaller. And then I had one just straighten my line out, which is my least favorite scenario, like hit it going the wrong way. And I leaned into him and he was going sideways and I just simply couldn't turn him. Finally, his head popped out of the water. I mean, I'll be conservative and say it was a five and a half pound fish. Chatterbait skips across the water and lose the fish. And that moment, like immediately the bite went, I mean, it was poof. It was Darn. completely different from that point on. I can show you what a six pounder on Duke's Bridge looks like. You can just click on the link below. I didn't catch it, but I didn't edit it last, last November. So Mike, we had 34 guys compete today in a mm -hmm. singles event. Three limits, three limits, that's it. And you caught how many keepers? Uh, two, two limits at least? Maybe, yeah, yeah, probably 13 or 14. Okay, so yep. we are, I wanna say a spring cold front, but it, yeah. that's kind of putting it mildly because basically the entire month of April, has been a cold front. I don't know about this global warming stuff, but global warming needs to get the drift, yeah. the memo that yeah. it's time to warm up. I'm sick and tired of cracks in my fingers. But what would you say to somebody during a spring cold front like this? I mean, we, normally channels around here should be loaded with bed and fish right now. It's 51 degrees in channels and the main lake. There's nothing. I say nothing. There certainly are a few fish that are spawning, but very few. That was not a dominant pattern. Yeah. So what would you tell someone to, offer to somebody free advice now free advice on 100 fish here on fishing cold fronts during the spring i mean i think at the point that we're at now you know we're so far along in the spring a cold front like at the end of march or the beginning of april might be different but we're so far along now and the length of days is so long i mean it's daylight till 8 30. so True. the bottom line is like if you don't know what to do stay shallow i mean that really is the answer 
when you get to this point in the year because these fish have two things on their mind but it's about to be one and basically right now there's some feeding <laughs> but man they are, they are really planning to spawn and that's why it's no surprise that i caught them right in the mouth of a channel you know so you say shallow how shallow were your fish today? uh i mean most of my fish today came between a foot and two feet of water probably yeah we had a very strong east southeast wind today uh that and did it not was, help no no yeah. we had some pretty awful weather we had some thunderstorms roll through and the wind and the rain was pretty miserable but See, you see, you can still be done. Wasn't done by many, but it was done by the man, Mike Graber. Saw you, great job on the James River yeah. Bassmaster Opens. Give him a follow. I'll put his links to his social media down below. And uh, he's got Oneida Lake coming up yeah. in uh, the summer. And, yep. and he's rooming with me. So <laughs> oh, it's man. going to be that a That unfortunate laugh, downside. It's going to be sure. fun. Yep. The unfortunate downside. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. He's going to wake yep. up with half his hair missing. So, Mike, congratulations. Yep. Outstanding job. Thank you. He's got a wedding to go to. So, until the next time, we'll see you all in the water. Sixth place is worth 80 bucks. So, you got some of your money back. Weighing 8.78 pounds, Mr. Jimmy Dopkin. Congratulations, sir. Outstanding. Fifth place. Fifth place with 9.79 pounds, Mr. Joe DiMarzio. Probably the first game out of the movie. Fourth place worth $150, 13.20 pounds, Mason Alvarado. Third place, $200, 14.17 pounds. Plus, has a Mega Rex skeg guard on there, so that gives them another $100. So that's $200 plus $100 a day is worth $300. Outstanding job, Justin Brinkman. Good job, Justin. Get vengeance on your son for you. Well, we'll see, right? Yeah, Second place, weighed in, 14.95 pounds. That is worth $350. Bucks. But, also had a big bass today. Which was came in at 5.44 pounds. That's another $170. I think that's 520 bucks. Congratulations, Mr. Seth Wingard. <laughs> 650 bucks for first place. 19.01 pounds. Also wins gift cards from the Tackle Shack. Mike, have you been to Tackle Shack? Well, <laughs> <laughs> they got a good selection of they things. Do. Okay, <laughs> so they got a gift card for compliments of straight up mounts. Because he has a straight up mount on his boat. Also first place, he gets a free hat from the Tackle Shack. Yeah. Wear that the next tournament yeah. and 15% off the store all week. No, I, I mean, if you want, you can give it to Seth. I mean, it's up to you. Seth has won a lot. Seth gets, Seth gets 15% off. I guess I can decide that. I work <laughs> Seth, you get 15% off all week. Nice you get trouble with Brendan. That's on you, yeah. not me. Yeah. He's going to New York, so he'll need it. Who is Seth? Congratulations, Mike. Outstanding job. Good job, Mike. Good job, Mike.